Good morning, it's Pamela. You know, sometimes I make videos and I don't really post them until I'm ready to. Um, for those of you that uh, might not want to hear some sensitive things about the soul or families or emotions, or just life in general, you can leave now. You actually can. And it's a warning to you. But if you are here, it's not a coincidence. See, life isn't a coincidence. This can't be a coincidence. The earth, how we're here, the creator. But that's what I believe. It can't be a coincidence. But if you're on here and you're just looking to not receive something, this is your chance to leave. Just go on. Get, go. If you're here to judge or you're here to try to point out some negative, that's on you. But for those of you that want to hear something and then want the wisdom and wanted to feed into something that could create a fullness on your soul from an experience that's real stay with me let's get started let's talk about families let's talk about me if you always talk about yourself first and 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 and, and put it in the example then people aren't really so offended you understand what i'm saying because we already know that somebody's going to feel like you. Somebody's going to go through what you have. You can't weigh pain, but it's going to be different, okay? But the same. You understand what that is, you know? Kind of like when somebody says, what kind of plant is that? There's a lot of plants. What kind of spice is that? Several spices. But it's still a spice, right? It's still a doggone spice. There's still mothers and fathers that hurt their children. I was one. With lies about the other parent. There's been many posts about it. I decided to address that today. I decided to talk about the parent that has failed. The parent that has lied like I was lied to. I was lied to about my father for years by my mother. Just the hate in the end was, was put in me for him. Because I wasn't with him. Because of the inadequacy of the one parent that ran. That either didn't want to work it out. Who knows what their problem was. It's really none of my business. But what my business is, is to be able to talk about the business of parents that use their children for hate and injustice. Sometimes parents need somebody to team up with them. They don't even necessarily mind if they're guiding them to rough waters. As long as they're by their side. Because this is what happened to me. My mom told me so many bad things about my dad. That when I first met him. Or even if a person's out there that lives with him. If you got this chatter going back and forth. And you're dealing with a child that doesn't have a reason. And they have a smaller mind. And, and they're just trying to figure out if they like kool-aid or they like pop i mean keep it small will you folks calm it down my mother didn't she went head on i was a little girl when she told me all her personal problems about my father bless her soul god rest her soul she she's gone now but i forgive her remember i'm going to keep telling you you cannot like your parents but you love the fact they created you okay you don't have to come on here like some people and say, oh, you know, they did their best. Maybe they didn't. Maybe you need to get real. Maybe it wasn't their best. Because never is best a lie. When people lie about their children, parents that are missing or gone or not around, it's wrong. So couldn't you find the good? The child already knows either they're absent, they're not around, or... uh when they have had an opportunity to meet a, a grandparent, a parent, they're like going, what's going on here? Gosh, my mom and my dad didn't, didn't tell me this part. I seem to kind of feel something. Could it be a fuzzy warmth that we got the same blood? That somebody's been hiding something from you? That, that you've been picking at one another in life? This has happened in my siblings. If this is a dress that you think I'm talking about you, I'm talking about my life. Then we can jump into yours. It's always a good idea to put you first as an example. You 
know what I mean. When you send out somebody to see if the coast is clear. We learn these games in childhood. Hide and go seek. Remember standing in that little dark place with your heart thumping? Wondering if they're going to find you. Wondering if they're going to see you. Wondering if you're going to not sneeze or make a noise. They're going to know where you're at. Ali Ali out since free, 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 we used to say, hide and go seek. They'd cover their eyes, stand in the corner, and the kids would run and hide. Well, it's not time to hide today. The kids don't have to hide. Me as a parent and a grandmother, we don't have to hide. We can come on and we can, we can talk about things. How parents use their children as weapons. Not realizing they can only handle childlike conversations. Like, you know, their first college is the sandbox. Take it easy on your kids. Because you didn't have it work out with your mate. Do not take it out on an innocent child that you think can handle a conversation that is wrong. It's like asking a five-year-old to drive a car. Okay, you're putting too much responsibility on them. And they grow up. They grow up codependent. They grow up hurting, questioning, wondering why. Never being able to be innocent and free to have their own choice. You thought you could put them on them to, to make choices for them as a protection. But was the choice a positive choice? Or was it negative? Did you intentionally put them on the wrong direction for your selfish Greediness, emotional things you couldn't handle, trying to hide things from them. Self? I'd say you did. My mother did. The victim. Feel sorry for me. Stop manipulating children about their parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties, other people. Stop it. You're only hurting yourself. Okay? It's a subject I've held back on. I haven't discussed it. By now, if you're getting heated up and, you're, and your little throat's kind of throbbing under here, just put two fingers right here. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Don't judge me before you actually think. Maybe she's trying to help somebody. Besides herself. Because I know parents have hurt children. I know parents have guided their children to not like people in their family. Okay? We all know the pervert in the family. We all know different things that could hurt a child. But you know what? It's an extreme. I'm talking petty lies that just filter through a family. That one day that parent's going to say, I didn't know that that was going to come out and be some truth. Well, your children grow up. And they get big like trees. Yeah. And they stand on their own. I'm a victim from that, but a survivor. If I didn't have the therapy I had and the good Lord, I wouldn't be able to have discernment to figure it out. To actually love a child. To actually know that parents can damage children. So if you've got a child, do not tell them everything possibly bad about the other parent. You can do it in a cuddling, soft way. You can compare things as a flower. You can use stories as nature. And you can pray. Teach a child to pray and be positive. They'll remember it their whole life. And they won't have fear when it's dark. It's only normal to fear the dark. You know, I've always been afraid of the dark. I don't need a lot of lights on, but I like the front door locked. I like to feel secure about it. But you know what? We need to lock ourselves into truth. Let's lock ourselves today into truth about how to talk to a child and how to treat a child. There's many, many, many lies that start. 
And the child doesn't know. My mother told me so many bad things about my father. The first day I met him, I was like, what should I do? Is there tomatoes, anything, a pie, something I can smash in his face, throw at him? Because when you're a child and you hear those things, you might even take a stick and hit a tree. I hit a tree. I remember talking to a few trees because I had anger. And I had a stick. And I hit it. Children act out when they're hurt and don't know everything. Then others step in because they can see. I had counselors and, and people in school step in and help me. I'm talking about me. If it affects you, then... Oh, well, you stepped up quietly and heard it and received it. Or are you going to be that parent and grandparent that says, Oh, no, not me. I'd never do that. Well, I can see it in your children. And your children are you. So where is it coming from? Be careful of parents that are toxic, that are telling other people mean things to control a child. God bless you today. Watch yourself, will you? Remember, if you hurt a child, the good Lord and the Bible says, for those of you that don't believe, you should have already left this talk. My God says, if you hurt a child, you'd be better off at the bottom of the sea with a millstone around your neck. Now, I don't know how big a millstone is, so we'll ask Alexa. Alexa, what is a millstone? The noun, millstone, can have a few meanings. One, either of a pair of circular stones between which grain or another substance is ground, as in a mill. Two, anything that grinds or crushes. Three. Okay, Alexa, anything stop. Anything that grinds or crushes? That's enough for me. So, we all are God's children. We all are together, brothers and sisters. If you don't believe that, why are we all related? Why do we have two eyes, a nose, a mouth? We can breathe, we can feel. We have tears. We have emotion. When you sleep, your eyes are closed. How come you can see? It's your spirit. But we're not going to get into that. I'm going to stay focused on the parent. My parents. So I don't offend no one. My parents got away from each other. Mm -hmm. Far away. Picture the United States of America. One stayed in Florida and one went to California. Interesting, isn't it? The split, the breakup. Not knowing. Children need to be secure. There's a little thing that says, child, live what they learn. You know, I don't have it in front of me, but I will come back on. If a child lives with hostility, hostility, host when you're hostile. I'm just trying to rehearse all of them. They, they uh, live with anger. If a child lives with ridicule, he lives to have shame. If a child lives with love, he learns to adapt. The list goes on. If you want to look it up, it's children learn what they live. And I like it because it keeps reminding us, kind of like a stoplight, red light, red light, stop, yellow, you're going to make it through. We need reminders in our life because we could get caught up in other stuff that would detour us from important, valuable lessons and things that we should be doing when it's concerning a child. Hear that? So Miss Cool... Had to meet her dad when I was probably 11. Uh, they put me on an airplane. Sat me up in front with the pilot back in the day on Delta. Gave me a hat. Gave me the stewardess. Gave me little wings. I got to actually sit in the pilot's thing. Because I went alone. I was pretty secure. But still empty. And so I went to Florida and got off the plane and met my father. And I said, do they still use the same money here? It's a lot to put on a child, isn't it? Got off the plane. 
and remembered all those things my mother told me about my father. And there wasn't one, one nice word. Can you find something good in anybody? Because if it's your parent, wouldn't you want to have something good because you're them? That's when we call brainwashing. That's what we call, uh, they call it grooming now, but it's for like, you know, things that I don't want to discuss. But it's actual saturating of someone's brain and spirit and soul and innocence and love and just all kind of things that a child deserves. Women and children first, the soldiers say. Some people don't like war. I don't either. But if a soldier gave you the freedom to worship somewhere or to eat your ice cream in these churches and, and stand up there and actually say, we're, we're not going to, you know, salute a flag. Listen, people aren't going to run into heaven with a flag, but we can respect it. And back to the parents. Be that person that is aware of what's going in your children's ears because for me now remember for me wasn't good my and but yet i remember now thank you lord my grandmother would stand behind my mom later years as now and i remember saying and uh jewish kind of voice with an immaculate house and can filter fish in the fridge and a kosher kitchen. I love you, Grandma. She'd say, if you don't have anything good to say about anybody, don't say nothing at all. Why was that so important? Because now the scars are healing and you get past the scars that are healing and you're not rebellious and you actually want to help somebody else that was drowning in a place that you want to save, but at the same time, not literally do it in a way on a channel like I'm doing, do it in a way in a letter or a poem and give it to somebody because you can't control or change anyone. You can only share your experiences. So it's Miss Cool saying, you know what? Share something today in love. I remember I worked at a five-star hotel and the chef used to say, okay, when we set this plate up, it's got to look real nice. Let's get the garbage right. Let's put everything down. Let's wipe the sides of those plates. Let's make it beautiful, okay? Let's take those fresh grapes that are rinsed in cold water and throw some powdered sugar on them. It's the presentation, how you do it, your bedside manner, whatever it is. We've all met a mean nurse. We've all met a mean police officer. We've all me met a mean teacher and more. That's another story. And it's another story about a police officer I had fired for what he did to my son. Oh, yeah, I got the letter. And a teacher, I'll be honest. <laughs> when you go through your life and things happen to your children or with teachers and different things. What's important today, I want to end this video is if I've said anything to you about being careful, what you say. Now we all make mistakes, don't we? Like the parents that got caught one day at a big picnic and the parents had always said, hey little shit. Really? So they went to this big picnic, right? And all the family was there and their friends and their friends and their friends. And one of the strangers walked up and said, what's your name? And the little kid said, little shit. Be careful what you say. God bless you today. Peace, Miss Cool.